Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of Burton Ballers. And um, today I'll be previewing our match against Nottingham Forest. But are people really interested in this match, or are they interested in some transfer news which has been circling around the club? Welcome to the Burton Ballers. Ain't got no time for no stallers. Yeah, we are the risers. We're not the fallers. Our channel is growing wider and taller. Yeah, we're here to give you the news. About your dear beloved blues, yeah. So if you like this YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and turn on that bell. Yeah. So we ended the year with a win after four straight defeats. Um, was it four or three? I can't remember. But we hadn't won for about five games. All that's all I know. But um. We we, 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 we we ended up with a bang. Can we start 2023 with a bang? You know, we had a Bournemouth team who we dismantled. And now we've got a Nottingham Forest team who are in the bottom three of the table. So they are, the, again, they are there for the taking. But we need to, you know, football's not one on paper. It's got to be one out on the pitch. And what I want us to do, what I want us to continue to do, continue to play with a 4 3 3 play that way against Bournemouth and we got the best out of our players continue to play Zachariah Zachariah showed what we, what a good holding midfielder can do or well, just a good a decent holding midfielder can do don't take Nottingham Forest for granted okay they may be near the bottom but we got to play them the same way that we played against Bournemouth come out the trap straight away let's get at them from the start rattle them and hopefully get a good performance and we've got to see how we play without Reese James. Because once, once Reese James came off the park against um, uh, uh, Bournemouth, we looked a little bit, you know, disjointed. So we've got to see how we can perform without our talisman, Reese James, in the side. Um, not the Forest, they've got a few injuries of their own. Coyote, and uh, he's, he's, he's been a big loss because he's their engine room in midfield. Gibson White will be doubtful as well. Their creativity. So, And they're still trying to find synergy after all those transfers that they made during the um, last transfer window. So, you know, if we can score, City Grounds is quite an intimidating place to go. I've been there, great atmosphere out there. But if we can score a couple of goals early, keep that crowd quiet, then I think we can get the job done. So I'm going for a 2 nil victory again against um, Nottingham Forest so we'll see how we get we do but you know everyone you know we wouldn't think that there's a game come, come on Sunday because everyone's talking about one name and that's Enzo Fernandez Enzo Fernandez Chelsea uh, talking about um meeting their release calls but it's not about meeting their release calls it's about paying a little bit extra to try and um get a deal that is favourable for us but some may ask if we're paying a bit extra why are we getting a deal that's favourable but the reason is you um, um, it's been explained that if you um, activate his release clause all that money comes out in one chunk if that, all that money comes out in one chunk that's going to um, prevent us from buying other, 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 other targets because all of that money is going to be in this year's accounting for financial fair play. If we can negotiate on a higher deal but over a certain amount of years then for financial fair play reasons that means that we'll be within fair play, financial fair play rules and we can go out and buy um, our other targets that we want. So that's why it's important. And the club at the moment are negotiating this with Benfica. Apparently, Enzo Fernandez has told the, um, Benfica that he wants to join Chelsea. He, and so, um, let's see. There's, you know, these, these next two or three days are going to um, be the make or break. Because Benfica want, if any deals to happen, they want it to be done early so they can go out and buy targets and um, tar replacements for him. Um, and the thing is, you know, 120 million, 105 million pounds, I think, is 120 million euro. Lots of money, big money for this guy. He's only played 20 odd games for Benfica. So um, a lot of our fan base want it. Um, in, um, um, of course, he's a good player. I'm not doubting. He was, he was one of the great players for um, Argentina in, in the World Cup. But. I know it's not my money, everyone says it's not your money, but you know, the club seeing us paying that sort of money, you know, it's gonna be difficult for us to negotiate other other deals in the in the future. We already overpaid on Cucurella. You know, this player, you know, if we can get him for five or six years and he does well for us and he takes us up to that level other level, it's money worth spent. But 
I, for one, I don't get excited with transfers anymore because, you know, I was excited when um, Havertz joined the club. I was excited when Ziyech joined the club and, you know, and Pulisic and players like team and players like that. But, you know, I need to see them perform on the pitch. You know, it's the, the transfer market is important because you have to get in the right players. But then once you get in the right players, how do they perform on the pitch? How does it translate on, onto the pitch? You know, if this guy comes in and he's putting in stellar performances, then that's the time I'll start to get excited. Not as the transfer is being made, you know. But the club are identifying midfield targets, which is good to see because that's an area that hasn't been addressed for a while. So spending big on this guy is good. And we still may be getting Declan Rice in the summer as well. So um, Enzo Fernandez, Declan Rice partnership, that can set us up for the future. I know some fans are saying, no, that means we're not going to get Declan Rice, but it doesn't. It doesn't because the club will still be looking at him in the summer as well. Um, there's talk about Jorginho going, and the good news as well, Kante is renewing his contract, and so that will be give us a fantastic midfield because Kante wouldn't have to play in all the big games anymore. We can we can we can manage his game time, um, and so we can. Uh, Two good players for every position. That's what Jose Mourinho used to say. That's what made us competitive. Our squad isn't, isn't great at the moment. You know, we've got some good players, but we need to upgrade on a lot of the players. That's why we are where we are in the league at the moment. That's why we haven't competed for the league for ages. That's why we can only turn it on in cup games. So, you know, some pe people say, are oh, we getting too much, too many players? And we can never have too many players, you know. So we have to get in the right player, the right profile of players, top players who are going to elevate us and turn us into a good good team. You know, from what I've seen of Enzo Fernandez, he's he's a great all-round midfielder, good tenacious in the tackle, very good eye for, for a pass, long and short, good creativity, good at, you know, good long-range shot, good, good in the box, he can take on a man, so he's, he's got all those attributes. But I just love to see him how he gets on in the Premier League. You know, I think he can do it. I think he's got the mentality to do it. You know, and so for me, it will be a good buy. But until he sign that piece of paper, as I keep saying, hold up that shirt, I'm not getting excited by it at all. So, you know, but the club are showing ambition, great ambition. I love to see that. You know, once Roman went, everyone was quiet, laughing at us, saying Chelsea are finished, and that gone are the days of big spending. But these guys are proving that they're ambitious, they're splashing out the cash, and they want us to be competitive, not next year, not the year after. They want us to get be competitive straight away. So, the signs in the market and Cuckoo getting signed, um, Bashi, the, the, the defender, um, getting signed, and uh, others who were linked with. It's, 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 it's happy days for Chelsea. You know, this season may be a bit painful, but I think from next season, I think we're going to get our Chelsea back. And it's exciting times to look forward to. If we can emulate the that first half performance against. Um, um, Bournemouth, uh, Nottingham Forest, keep up that momentum. Then not only off the field, we're doing big things on the field. We're starting to see an improvement as well. So I'm looking forward to the future. I told you guys, be patient, and we'll 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 um, then uh, have success. You know, but it comes with patience. It comes with good planning. And from what I'm seeing, it looks like we are on the right track. So guys, stick your comments in the section below. Uh, what do you think? What the score is going to be against Nottingham Forest? What do you think about this Enzo Fernandez deal? Are you happy with it? Do you think we're overpaying on him or do you think he's worth the money? Let us know in the comment section I said below. And I'll see you on the next video. Until then, take care for now. Bye-bye.